Hello folks and fans. Um, this is, uh, well, okay, so we're going to the cottage tomorrow for like nine days. And uh, I wanted to pack my tobaccos and my pipes and I figured it'd be a great opportunity to show you guys what I'm currently working with, what's in my cellar, um, and uh, pick what I want from here, put it in there, and then that's gonna be like my little pipe traveling cooler um, for the next couple weeks. I do apologize for my appearance. I mean, I might be out of frame, but I really wanted you guys to see this, but I am sweating. Um, it's, uh, it's not that warm out right now. We're only looking at around 21 degrees Celsius, but the humidity is between 86% and 90% today. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty brutal. But anyway, so here are all the tobaccos that I'm currently working with. So these are all tobaccos that I've got open that I'm actively smoking, some more than others. Um, and I thought I'd kind of just run you through it real quick um, and uh, ask you guys if you also are currently working with the, you know this many tobaccos on the go. Um, so, you know, first off, uh, I guess we'll just go right to left. Uh, GLP's Meridian, Dunhill Nightcap. And this is Dunhill, it's not Peterson. Uh, I got this from, uh, that is an old tin that was uh, in one of the uh, tobacconists in Ottawa, the one downtown, which I think is called, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, Ottawa Cigar Emporium. So they still have the old tins and I've still got some nightcap here. Uh, McBaron Vanilla Flake. This is, oh yes, okay. And then this one, McBaron Vanilla Cream Loose Cut. So I'd gotten this to smoke in the summer when I, sorry, in the winter. Um, and I primarily smoke this. It's the only aromatic I really enjoy. I primarily smoked this at the dog park and then I bought some more because I really wanted to try the vanilla cream and you get 100 grams for the same amount of money as the 50 gram tins for the uh, vanilla flake. So uh, I kind of made my way through that last summer, and sorry, last winter and uh, people at the dog park seem to like it. Uh, Squadron Leader by Samuel Gowith. This is a special blend that I saved this. Um, I've gone through a few tins, but uh, this is, you know, like I was saying earlier, I am a seasonal smoker. I, I mentioned this in one of my previous videos. I'm a seasonal smoker, and um, this, up until I discovered Meridian and um, Chelsea Morning by GLPs, this was my go-to summer English. It was the only English I could stomach in the summertime, so love this blend. Samuel Gowitz Navy Flake. Beautiful flakes here, impossible to smoke. It's a delicious tasting blend. Um, you know, kind of like Latakia's on the inhale and then Virginia's on the exhale, uh, on the retro. But it doesn't matter how long you dry it, it's so tough to smoke because it, it never stays lit. Um, it's always too moist. I've let this out for hours and I've even rubbed it out and let it sit out in the sun to try and dry it. It still won't take, so love the flavor. Very difficult to smoke mechanically. Um, the very last dredges of my Peterson's University Flake. This was the blend that I smoked the most last year. Uh, so it has a special place in my heart. There's really not that much left. I mean, I can't really say that I'm actually working with it at the moment, but I'm trying to get through some of these tins before I can justify opening up uh, one of the University Flake tins that I have in my cellar. Uh, St. Bruno Flake. I wanted something, uh, oh, here's the tin. Right. I wanted something, I wanted to get into Burleys, you know, plain and simple. I didn't like Haunted Bookshop. Uh, the only Burley that I could really stomach is the one that I actually really enjoyed was the University Flake, and that's a Vey Burr, it's a Virginia Burley, with a bit of a plum topping to it. Some people argue it's, it's uh, dark fruits or berries or prunes, but whatever. Uh, St. Bruno Flake, hi, nicotine. So this is helping me slow down on my cigarette uh, intake, but it does have a topping. And you know what? I smoke it in like one of my cottage pipes. Um, <clears throat> I smoke it in my Dr. Graybow Grand Duke alongside any um, aromatic that I might smoke just because of that topping. It's all right. I don't have a lot of experience with it yet, but I'm hoping that this is something that I can sort of learn to discover um, you know, little by little. Uh, ooh, this one is another very fancy one. 
very difficult to find, at least here in Canada. It's Germain's Royal Jersey Original Latakia Mixture. Um, this is an amazing Latakia, and I mean, uh, it's so tough to find. I was saving up, you know, every paycheck. I'd save up a little bit, put a little bit aside to be able to buy this from my tobacconist. So I'd bought a tin, and uh, I was like, oh, this is, this is tremendous. Let me save up for it, and then every two weeks, I'll buy myself a tin, and I'll start cellaring it. So two weeks later, I get paid again, and I go, and the tobacconist is like, yeah, some guy came in yesterday and bought out the rest of our stock. I was like, no, come on. I've been saving up. So, And then he said, why don't you tell me? I could have put them aside for you. And I said, no, that's fine. So lesson learned. Um, I'm very grateful that I'm friends with my tobacconist because he will help me out like that. So um, support your local B&M. Uh, GLP's Union Square. I'm definitely taking this with me. Fantastic Virginia. I've spoken about it before. McBaron HH Pure Virginia. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, there's the Chelsea Morning by GLP's. So I love smoking this in the mornings. And this is actually another uh, alongside Meridian and Squadron Leader. Those are my three summertime English blends just because they're not as cold weathery. <laughs> Or, or pungent, and I guess they don't have as much stopping power in the Latakia department, which I like. Um, you know, it's a Latakia blend, it's an English blend, but it's not Latakia forward, so love this love this blend. Um, <clears throat> Dunhill Durbar. Uh, this is an old Dunhill tin that I found in my tobacconist. I've been smoking this on and off for uh, about two years or something like that. Give me one second, I think the dog is eating something he shouldn't be. False alarm. Uh, he was eating his kibble, but he's still wearing the cone of shame because his incision got infected. So um, he's uh, he had to wear it for like another two weeks while we gave him the antibiotics and stuff like that. He's almost fully healed. So hopefully by tomorrow we can take off the cone and he'll get back to normal life. Uh, you also may have heard Mrs. Rockwood cough just now. She has COVID, but she's doing fine. Um, and we've been distancing. So that's been kind of tough. I've been testing every day now since Sunday. So she first tested positive on Sunday with those little rapid tests. Um, I've been testing every day and I've been negative the whole time, but we have been making an effort um, to distance and to not, you know, not get me sick because we're going on holiday tomorrow and I don't want to spend all of that in bed um, or potentially carrying it around and giving it to other people. So she's doing much better, but that's the cough that you heard <laughs> earlier. Uh, okay, back to the list. McBaron Plum Cake Navy Blend. Uh, I've smoked a little bit of this. This was the first non-aromatic that I ever smoked. And I still have some from... Hey, Rufus. Hey, good boy. This is the first non-aromatic um, that I ever smoked. And you can, you know, you can argue... Some, some can argue that it might be an aromatic just because of that rum topping to it. I don't think so. I think it's, you know, I think it's a perfect... Uh, kitchen sink blend because there are a lot of Kias in here. There are Virginias. There's a bit of Orientals. There's some Burleys. You name it. It's a hodgepodge of tobaccos. It's fine. I still have about this much left from when I first bought the tin in, I think, uh, 2019 or something like that. Um, something crazy like that. But anyway, I don't smoke it that often. It bites the heck out of me. Uh, Dunhill Ready Rubbed. This is a beautiful blend. Um, again, I bought this around the same time that I bought the uh, McBaron Plum Cake. Only difference is that I love this Virginia blend. Um, it does have a bit of a sweet, uh, sorry, you could probably hear Rufus lapping up his water because his water bowl is right next to the camera. Um, it's a very sweet Virginia. There's definitely an added topping to it, but it's one of those traditional Dunhill blends, right? It was a Dunhill tin. It wasn't, Pe well, Peterson doesn't even make this. Um, but it's so special to me and this is my Christmas, uh, my Christmas tobacco. Um, there's nothing better for me than to just, you know, make a fire and around Christmas time, get my big thick velvet smoking jacket out, put on a movie and then just enjoy this by the fireplace. Um, so I'll always have memories of doing that at the Rockwood Manor and I'm hoping to do that this year at the Rockwood Towers next Christmas. Uh, well, this says Dunhill My Mixture, but this is the Petersons because the first My Mixture I had was Dunhill. Um, and this jar is dedicated to it, so it's the 965. 
This is the Peterson version though, solid, solid English blend. Peterson the Royal Yacht, so I'm currently smoking that. That's one of my favorite summer blends. Lots of people don't like it um, because of the topping. I don't mind it. In fact, I think it has a really nice um, zing to it on the retro hill, so also smoking that at the moment. Uh, Samuel Gow with Celtic Talisman. This is a Kirsch style cherry aromatic by Samuel Gowith. It's fine. It tastes like cherry, but it's not like punchy in the face, you know, Captain Black or Borkham Riff style cherry. It's a nice natural cherry. You taste the Virginias, but I'm just not that fond of it. So I've been slowly working my way through it over the past couple of years. Every now and then I'll have a bowl if, um, if you know, there's people around and they don't particularly like the smell of tobacco, I will smoke this around them. So um, Bengal slices. This is how much I have left. Every now and then, I'll smoke some of it. Again, it's more of a winter blend for me. I have a really hard time with that, uh, kind of like an aniseed, set sort of flavor. Not my favorite, but I do respect it as a blend. It's got some historical significance. And you know, every once in a while, I don't mind cracking that open. Uh, Peterson Irish Flake. Still got a couple flakes left here. Uh, solid Burley. Again, once in a while kind of thing for me. You know, it's not off my list, um, but it's not one of the blends that I will reach for on a daily basis either. Um, ooh, full Virginia Flake. This is by Samuel Gowith. This is the quintessential Virginia for me. Love this stuff. Very difficult to get my hands on it. Um, <clears throat> not only because it's always sold out online, <laughs> but uh, someone has gone through and bought out the entire eastern like half of Canada of all these tins so very tough to get a hold of um, this is like a special treat kind of a kind of a smoke uh, Elizabethan mixture yeah uh, self-explanatory love this in the summertime uh, Eileen's dream by cow or cao um this is you know I'm, I'm slowly working my way through it i'm not a huge aromatic guy and if i do have to smoke one i prefer the mac barons because um they make a really nice cavendish it's the only cavendish i actually enjoy uh the eileen's dream is a little bit too bonbon ish for me but a lot of people at the dog park like it again this is a winter dog park blend so that i don't lose my smoking privileges in case someone decides to be a jerk and complain and uh, here we have Quiet Nights, of course, by GLP's Fantastic English. Entirely a winter blend. And Orlick Golden Slices, uh, not my favorite. Virginia. I smoked a bowl of it yesterday to break in a new corn cob that I got. I don't know if it's going to do it any good, but, you know, it, 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 you know, it produces smoke. Let's just say that. Some people swear by Orlick, and there's nothing wrong with Orlick. It's just a little bit too bright for my palate. I prefer something a little bit darker, like the Sam Gowith uh, Full Virginia Flick. Um, and of course, Amphora Original Blend. Uh, again, this, you know, I was kind of at the checkout uh, on Four Noggins and I just said, okay, well, to heck with it. Let me try that. Um, it's fine, you know. Yeah, it's, it's chocolatey. Uh, it's the original, so not the full aroma. Um, it's chocolatey, it's fine. It's got a good room note. People seem to enjoy it. So every now and then I'll reach for it. But essentially, these are all of the tobaccos that I'm currently working my way through. So, actually, I never counted them really. Hang on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24 blends. Oh, 25, 26 blends currently on the go. Um, do you guys have that many on the go? Or are you guys the types of smokers who get one tin of something, you smoke it through, and then you go and you get a different tin of something else, and that's how you try them out. Personally, I can't resist cracking them open, you know, cracking a new tin open every time I get it. I'm about to show you my, you know, humble cellar. Uh, it's very small, but these are, you know, there's one thing in there that I really wanted to crack open that I made myself not touch. Um, but yeah, tell me, do you guys have these many tobaccos on the go? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. So without further ado, uh, let's take a look at my cellar. So 
I have got a Royal Yacht, because I really enjoy it. Peterson Standard Mixture. Two things, the Capstan Original. I really like the Capstan, uh, the Flake. Uh, a couple of My Mixture 965s. Uh, two more Standard Mixtures, because it is one of my favorite Englishes. Three tins of Peterson's University Flake. And I spoke about that earlier. And here's the tin, actually, that I purchased that I didn't want to open just yet. It's uh, Peterson Flake. And it is from... Uh, oh, man, I think was it 2008 or 2012 or something like that. So this had a lot of age on it. I picked this up in a shop and... No, 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 no. When did Peterson start making... Uh, let's see here. Oh, no, it's from January 2020. Sorry. Um, so it already has over two years of age on it. Yeah, so what am I talking about? 2008. Dunhill was still around at the time and making this blend. Uh, so, yeah, January of 2020. So this is almost, almost two and a half years old. Actually, no, it's about two and a half years old now, yeah. So it's two and a half years old, and, you know, it's only going to get better with age. So, hi, Rufus. Hey, buddy. You want to smell that? You want to say hi to everyone? Yeah? You want to say hi to everyone? <laughs> Come here. <laughs> so it's already got two and a half years of age on it. Um, and as much as I want to crack it open, I just, it'll break my heart too. I want to get through everything else, through the rest of my Virginias, and then crack this open. And hopefully that'll be in, you know, another year or so, considering all the Virginias and vapors I currently have on the go. Um, so that's why I'm saving it and it's only going to get better with age and the other big Ziploc bag that I have, my puny measly little cellar, these are all Samuel Gowith tins. So we're talking full Virginia flake. Another full Virginia Flake. These two I got from my local tobacconist. And then the third full Virginia Flake is one that I got from um, Four Noggins. And it's kind of cool to see the old tins <laughs> versus the new tins, right? Not to mention the warning, you know, but just the art itself, kind of like how, you know, it's a little bit disappointing to see that the quality of the tin art has gone down so much. Um, even the logo, like everything is just more faded in these modern tints, but hey, what are you going to do? You can't win them all. Next, I have two tins of Squadron Leader that I also got from Um Same idea with the logo. It's a shame because, I don't know if you can see it, but the actual Squadron Leader tin in its original format is on the back here. And now this I bought from my local tobacconist. This is also squadron leader and i don't know if you can tell but the original uh, tin art is just underneath that brown sticker now tobacconists in canada were forced to start covering up all of the artwork on these tins um a couple of years ago i believe when um when this new law passed around they're saying you can't have any colors you can't have any um you know, any logos or any fancy branding on any tobacco products to dissuade children from wanting to smoke. So they had to take their original tins like this and like the original Squadron Leader tin that I have there and cover it up with like this brown nasty sticker. So um, nowadays you buy, you buy any tobacco product and it comes in like this uh, olive drab sort of color. Actually, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So for example, if, uh, if you wanted to buy just a basic pack of smokes, it looks like this now. That's all, that's all you get. The majority of it is a, uh, is a warning label and uh, yeah, you just have the name of it and that's it. No colors, no logos, no nothing. 
so local tobacconists are good at preserving some of these original tins with their original tin art. Um, you know, not all of them, but you'll find a lot of, you know, old school tins like this that people have just never bought. So um, you get to have the, the real deal with you. Anyway, I, I do apologize for going on this, uh, this long. I've been meaning to make this video for a long time and just kind of take you through what I'm working with. So um, my main question is, do you guys have this many tobaccos on the go? Um, and uh, what's in your cellar? Some of you have shown us already, but I love seeing kind of like unboxing videos and people just kind of like opening up the doors to their, uh, to their buffets or these big Rubbermaid bins and just seeing tons and tons of tins just piled one on top of the other. So um, yeah, what's in your cellar? Anyways, thank you very much. I actually got to put this all away now and pack the blends and the pipes and everything that I'm going to bring with me to the cottage. So um, I'm going to let you go, but thanks very much and see you next time.